Uh, you're talking about the natural love of in humans mm -hmm. being quite fickle. fickle. So are you saying that there is no fidelity in love until divine love is... Well, there's received? a part of human nature for there to be no real fidelity in a lot of their loves. And what I mean by that is, let's say you as a, in the perfect natural human decide today that you're going to make your life's work, uh, you know, teaching children. Mm -hmm. It's highly likely that some point in the thousands of years of your future that you'll decide that you've had enough of that now and that you're going to choose to do another thing instead of that yeah. as your future. And I could have loved the education of children or the working with children. While you did it. And it wouldn't have been a false love then? No, no, no. But, it, but it sort of loses its uh, luster. Potency, yeah. And potency and, and it... And it it's not so much as joy, you know, but it more it loses its luster, it lo loses its newness, and you start seeking a new experience. So is that part of the inbuilt process that God has created for us to develop, that our loves actually do change as we develop? Or well, God's done that for a number of reasons. One of the reasons, in fact, is to show you that there must be something beyond your condition. To create an aspiration. To create an aspiration. <laughs> That's thing. one of God's yeah. reasons why he did it. Yes. Um, so that, you know, you, you can see that the human nature, the human love, it, and, and we're here I'm talking about desires for specific things, which are our loves, you know. These, these come and go mm. as we're a human. But, but as we progress towards God, we start seeing, ah, oh, they come and go because they are not sufficient for my complete happiness. Mm -hmm. That's why they come and go. Mm -hmm. and, and yet when you go down the path of receiving God's love, every new choice you make is now complete for is sufficient for your complete happiness. complete happiness and it keeps growing in its capacity of completeness so what you feel is complete today feels you feel bigger tomorrow bigger the next day you know and so forth yeah. and that's not what it's like when you're in the sixth sphere and you're in the sixth sphere you engage a certain course of action and you may engage it for many hundreds and sometimes thousands of years but eventually you feel like it loses its luster mm -hmm. and you searching for a new experience mm -hmm. and this uh, underlying feeling in fact uh, is is a part of your the the image of god has created god's created you in this image to have that so that sooner or later you would be just you, you, you would not be satisfied with just being the perfect natural man anymore. It's so that you would realize that maybe there's something else that I can, that is going to bring even higher amounts of satisfactions to me than being the perfect natural man that I now have been satisfied for for the last 10,000 years or so. Yeah. And, and this causes you then to desire something more. Yeah. Now, imagine for a moment if you then had that realization and realize that your opportunity to have what you desired had been lost through yeah. your previous experience of choices. Through your previous decisions? Yeah, mm. yeah it'd be pretty hard. It, it would be quite a difficult thing wouldn't mm. it, to go through emotionally, mm. to, um, to realize that, wow, I hope God, I hope, you, would, you would definitely feel, wouldn't you, I hope God offers that again. Yeah. And once that hope develops inside of you then there's a high likelihood that point at some point that god's probably going to offer that again because god's so sensitive to desire hey? of course that's part of that's how i sort of um feel about the closing of the celestial heavens there'll be an opportunity for everyone to exercise desire in one way or another and then when God is satisfied, there's no remaining desire in these people to relate with me. Mm -hmm. I'll close the heavens. Yep. But as soon as there's another spark of desire, well, God is, God's going to feel it Sooner or later, sure. yeah, God will so respond. It's so, so unlikely, how long that takes, who knows, but... given what we know about God, mm. that um, God wouldn't respond to Correct. that. And, Correct. As you say, Correct. we don't know how long it would be. But... We also don't know, though, See, a person who becomes used to finding a new luster, mm -hmm. a, new, a new activity as a way of receiving some level of satisfaction, mm -hmm. generally engages in just engaging a new activity. Mm -hmm. so, so they don't consider that maybe there's something beyond every new activity that they could engage. Yep. 
It's sort of a diversion. Yeah, sideways. so a person who's used to going like this, engaging new activities, mm -hmm. has a high likelihood of engaging new activities for a long period of time mm. before they realize, wow, I've done a million activities now. Yeah or a thousand activities now for a hundred years each. Yeah. And I'm still not feeling the satisfaction or I'm not feeling the satisfaction anymore that I used to feel mm. before they start realizing it may be there's something more than that. You see, so it may be, like I said in the, in the discussion about closing of celestial heavens, it may be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or even millions of years before God reopens mm. it again. We, we don't know. Because a person who is used to engaging this kind of decision-making process in order to receive satisfaction is highly likely to continue that for a long period of time. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, is there any other distinctions you'd like to touch on now uh, between, um, I mean, that's a fairly massive <laughs> amount of stuff you've kind of covered already, but... The perfect natural man is very focused upon um, ethical behavior. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that he's focused on what is the right thing for me to do. It's often called, uh, in the Greek terminology, it was often called agape love, you know, love based on principle. Yeah. So, so the perfect natural man is a very principled being generally where they realize the principal demands that they must engage this particular behavior. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and often uh, it's a mixture of emotion and intellect that causes that kind of engagement. And, uh, and that's what drives them. The, perfect, the, the person who's progressed beyond that point doesn't just engage whether something's ethical or not. They have a huge desire and passion within them to do it. Yeah. as well, which brings them a far greater uh, level of uh, feeling of reward once they've accomplished the task that they were passionate about doing. Mm -hmm. uh, the perfect natural man finishes up believing he did the right thing. Mm. The person who's in a celestial spheres not only knows they did the right thing, mm -hmm. but feels really great about having done the right mm. thing, which is a very different state. Right. 